Good evening. I'm glad you could join us tonight for the Wednesday Night Vespers. I'm Sharonda Duncan. I'm going to start with a word of prayer. Okay, uh, Lord, please be with all of those who are sick in, in the hospitals. Be with the caregivers and those that are on the front line taking care of those who are sick. Be with those at risk and those who are sad because they've lost loved ones. Take care of our teachers and school personnel, along with first responders. Let them all feel your presence and comfort. Be with our church during this time of transition and guide our leaders. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Okay. I'm going to start now with a some verses from Colossians. It's uh, chapter 1, and it's the second part of verse 2 and goes through chapter 6. Or not chapter 6, but verse 6. Okay, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard is the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard of it and truly understood God's grace. So today we're going to be talking about the grace and mercy of God. There are a lot of hymns, this was the first thing that came to my mind, that are written about God's grace, mercy, and love. Some that come to my mind are Amazing Grace, Wonderful Grace of Jesus, At Calvary, Grace Greater Than Our Sins, Love Lifted Me, also known as John 3.16 to some. I could keep going on forever, but I'm going to go on with the next part, and we're going to talk about what grace and, and mercy really mean. Sometimes we think of grace and mercy as being the same thing, but they're not. They're different. Grace is a gift that we don't deserve, and mercy is not getting what we actually do deserve. Let's put it this way. Suppose a robber breaks into your house. You learn that the robber was desperate to provide food or needed medication that he couldn't afford for his child. He didn't want to do any harm, but his child's life was in danger. Instead of calling the police, you chose to let the thief go. That's mercy. After finding out about the medicine that his child needs, you give him some money and you help him find a way to earn and provide some more money to finish paying for the medication that the child needs. That's grace. Grace isn't asked for or deserved, but is freely given. Mercy is showing compassion and kindness to someone that you have the power to punish or harm. In our world today, mistakes are punished and often goodwill is only for those that are seen as worthy. So grace and mercy are a very big necessity, especially right now. The Bible is full of people who today we might just mark up as lost. Examples, King David was an adulterer and a murderer. Saul was a disbeliever and he helped kill many Christians. Moses was a doubter and Jacob was a liar. I could keep going, but I think we have the idea. God still used them to complete his purpose and his plan. Not only did he forgive them, but he endowed them with unmerited favor. Just like these, God's mercy and grace are there for all of us. Even though we are all sinners, he knows, I'm sorry, he shows us the kindness and the compassion that we need from him. He even sent his only son to die at Calvary. Just like the hymn says, Mercy there was great, and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. The saving grace is grace through the redemption 
that is in Christ Jesus, which provides the salvation to all of us. This is offered to us through faith in Christ, and we have to understand that we can't earn this. It is freely given. His grace covers our transgressions. God ex extends his loving compassion to us despite the fact that we are all unworthy sinners. Grace and mercy are glorious gifts from God that we should take or that should take us to our knees in worship and adoration. We can bring nothing to God except our humble and thankful hearts as we trust not in our works but solely in the finished work of Jesus Christ at Calvary. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Thank God that his mercy endureth forever. When we accept his grace, we begin to grow in his love. In time, these seeds of love that he has planted in our hearts will take root and bear fruit. Through acts of kindness, compassion, and love, we can then spread this grace and mercy that God has generally given to us, starting right here at Williams. Thank you and have a great rest of the week.